In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector Basics, we're going to look at one of the early steps in building your movie. That's taking the items that you've placed in your Media Room library and dragging them down to your timeline. Let me show you a couple of different ways to do that and some things you need to consider when you're combining items on a timeline. I'm going to take this video of a raft and we'll drag it down and drop it into track one. Now you notice you don't have to start at the very beginning of the track. And so sometimes there are reasons you don't want to if you want to add a title or something else later. You can move it by holding the left mouse button left or right wherever you want to. And you can start also if you wanted to even in track number two. Now one thing to remember in PowerDirector is that the Anything on a lower track will overwrite, uh, be in front of, layered on top of anything in the track that's above it. So if I take the uh, picture of this couple and drag it down here on track number two, when I go ahead and move my scrubber or uh, time indicator, which is what this is called, uh, let's go ahead and play the movie a little bit. You'll see the raft. And then as we move to the right, once we hit the play, or you can use spacebar, I have a raft and then I have the couple. And this completely overwrites it because it's in the higher numbered or lower track. So that's a little bit you have to remember. If I want it on top, I put it lower down or at a higher numbered track. But I can take this and I can drop it and drag it back up here to track number one. The other thing that I use an often lot, lot is the control Z as in zebra key. That's your undo. And you can undo many levels. And I can undo all those actions here and go back to where we started. So that's a very, very useful tool. I call that my oops combination, control Z. Let's show you another way to take this and bring this down into the timeline. I can highlight it. And then I can click on this button here, Insert on Selected Track. Now my track one is highlighted, so when I click on that, it drags it down into the first track, and I can move it. The other option I have is I can take more than one item, obviously, and put them on the track. I'll try drag this uh, boy over here and the video of the water slide, and now I have one and two. To move the playhead from one item to the other is very easy. You can drag it, but there's a much easier way. If this says clip, that is in blue. You're in clip mode. If you press the home key, it takes you to the beginning of the clip. If you press the end key, it takes you to the end of the highlighted clip. So likewise, if I'm here on the second clip, home takes me to the beginning and takes me to the end. If I turn this into movie mode, now the home key takes me to the beginning of my project and the end key takes me to the end of my project, which is very nice. So those are the two functions of home and end. The more you edit, the more you'll use keyboard controls rather than the mouse because it's faster. I'm going to take this music here and drag it down into track number two. And I'm going to make it equal to the uh, clip of the boy going down the water slide. You notice when I did that, at the beginning and end of each of these, you get a little blue line. And that's kind of your magnetic line so you can line things up perfectly one with the other. What I'd like to show you now is what happens when you want to insert something between one clip and another. Here we'll take the uh, uh, athlete in the pool. And we'll say we want to put the athlete between these two items. So I'll highlight the first clip, press the end key, to move my playhead there. And then with, uh, with the, this highlighted, I'm going to click on the insert button here. And now it gives me five options. Let's look at what each of these are. The first one says overwrite. Or you can hold the control key and uh, drop it down with the mouse. The overwrite, let's see what that does. That actually wrote over everything. It says, I'm king of the world. I live here. Everything else on this track belongs to me. And it will completely overwrite anything that's beneath it. I'll do control Z again out of that one. The other option I have, if I uh, highlight this again, 
and click on my button or I could drag it. It's trim to fit. If I go ahead and trim this one to fit into here, it will sample, simply cut it from the beginning to the amount of space available. It gives me my duration here. And in many cases, that's a little brutal. You may not want to do that. The other option I have is, if I click on that and drop it in, is speed up to fit. Now that's okay unless you have audio or unless you know it's going to make it incredibly fast. Let's click that in and play it just to see what happens. And here this guy is going a million miles an hour. That's probably not what we want. So we'll do Control Z and undo that one. Uh, we highlight it again and we have also insert. Now insert will move everything on that particular track to the right. Now click on it and it did a nice job. But notice what it also did. Before I had the water slide lined up with my music on track two and now they're not in sync. They're not where I want them to be. So let me show you a better way if you have multiple tracks and using insert. Uh, I'll highlight it again and click on my button and let's do insert and move all clips. Now notice what happened. It inserted it but it also moved every clip on every track to keep them in sync. I use this one a lot. Uh, so that's another way in which you can make this work for you. Let's click on this one and this time we'll just use the mouse. I'll take the mouse and drag down here and drop. And notice I have all the same options. So I can use the mouse if I want. Let's just use insert and move clips again. We'll take this one, we'll drag it and drop it here. And then again, I have another option here called crossfade. Let's see what happens when I do that. What crossfade does is it attempts to fade one item into the other by inserting a clip. And in this case, because the second clip is much longer than the first clip, the whole first part of it is a fade from one to the other. I never really see the boy at all in this case. I seldom use this transition uh, because of, uh, it, it's a little awkward to use. But let me move the boy down over here and we'll move the music that goes with him well. And now we'll try inserting this here again and we'll use the crossfade again. And now I have a little bit of the boy at the end. But when I click away, it inserted this transition. Uh, and so it goes from the swimmer, and then we have the uh, overlay here, and it finally moves into the boy going down the water slide. Um, I'd rather do my own transitions than let PowerDirector do it this way. I can control the length and all kinds of things. So um, I generally don't use that one. I'll control Z out of it. But here are some of the ways in which you can begin to build your project. We'll have other lessons showing you how to do some editing on the clips that you bring into your timeline in the near future.